Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost. <laughs> Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2021, the album, the Whitney Houston edition, Dad AF. <clears throat> and if he makes you feel like a million dollar bill, say it, oh, oh, say it, oh. I got my front of me sweatshirt, look, hey! How are you guys doing today? Did you love the big reveal? Oh my God, I had to put a blanket over it. That was the special effects. ding a ling a ling How's the drama drama phone? This is Peter speaking. Oh, hi, Jane. How are you? What? No, I just got my frenemies hoodie. My frenemies merch. Uh-huh. Well, it's a little snug. <laughs> and it's a little hot because it's 80 degrees outside. But I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, I put it on because I'm getting ready uh, to watch the next episode of Frenemies. <laughs> I can't wait. I love that Trisha Paytas. I'm one of Trisha's fishies. Uh -huh. What? What do you mean it's been canceled? It's called, what, is, what? No, it's not been canceled. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. Well, Trish Paytas did apologize to Ethan Klein. I think they may have worked things out. Uh -huh. Because Trish Paytas took down uh, their apology video. <laughs> I know, Trish Paytas deletes a lot of videos, but what? <laughs> no, no, no. I do believe that Front of Me's is coming back. Uh-huh. Well, no, it's sold out. You can't get your merch now, Jane. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I'm just sitting here uh, drinking my gimlet, you know. Mm-hmm. Don, no. Don's with his lady friend this weekend. Uh-huh. They, they headed down to uh, Miami. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for the next front of these episode. I can't wait. Uh -huh. Tuesdays? What do you mean they come out on Tuesdays? Oh, yeah. The Women's League is on Tuesday as well. Well, we'll watch it together. <laughs> Don't be jealous. I got a hoodie, Jane. Don't be. I'll let you wear it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, Jane, I love you too. <laughs> I love you three. <laughs> I love you four, five, six, and seven. I can't do this tonight. What? <laughs> why is six afraid of seven? Uh, I don't know why. Oh, because seven, eight, nine. You're so funny, Jane. All right, I love you too. Bye-bye. So anyway, yes, I got my uh, front of me's merch. I was like, what can I do to do something kind of special about it <laughs> other than just sit in a video and wear my sweatshirt? Which actually, it is, I got it 2XL and it is a little snug, but I don't think that's the front of me's fault. I think that's probably mine. But anyway, I also want to, um, if you haven't met my co-host yet, I want to introduce you to my co-host. This is him. His name is Centipede. Centipede likes to sit back here. Now, Centipede, I'm so tired of his opinions. He is so loud. He just, shut up. I shut up. No, we don't care about Gabby Hanna today. So anyway, he'll be sitting back there and, you know, giving his, what? Tana, Mon <laughs> Tana Mojo, what? What about her? Another stalker story. Okay. Anyway, he'll be sitting back there giving his two cents about this and about that. But um, I have to tell you, I just went, where's my microphone? <laughs> you know that's a question you ask when you're a singer-songwriter. <laughs> I just had that conversation while I was doing my review video. <laughs> Little red Corvette, baby, I'm much too fast. Anyway, I just, listen. Working at the car wash, yeah. I just went and did the Prince Tea review over at um, Starbucks <laughs> today because I went and I got my Starbucks today. I have like 50 different colors going on here. So before I get into this video, I need to put a little lip gloss on, you know. When your lips are dry as mine, what? Then it's Luna Beauty time. <laughs> so let's get the lip gloss going. And let's get into this video. Did you, did you see that Manny MUA uh, tweeted out that he has a big project? Big project. Here's a project for you. Bring back Enchantment. That's my favorite uh, lip gloss in the entire world. I don't know why they don't bring back what everybody wants, okay? But anyway, I think we know by now we want the Celine and we want the Enchantment. I'm just saying, okay? But anyway, Manny MUA tweeted out that he has a big project that he's working on. And so he will be Manny MIA for the... Not Manny... Now... I really did think when I first uh, started watching beauty influencer drama that his name was Manny Mua, but apparently it's not Manny Mua, it's Manny Mia. <laughs> mama Mia, Mama Mia, Manny Mia, Manny Mia. Anyway, um, so today we're, not, we're talk, talk, talking about Manny MUA, okay? Today, whoo, it is so high in this sweatshirt. <laughs> 
It's hotter than a center on church on Sunday, like that Welcome to Plathville reality show. Did y'all watch that show? I love that show so much. But anyway, I have to tell you, this is a very high quality hoodie. It is really, really nice. And it came very quickly. I got it in like just, I mean, I ordered the day that everybody else did, and it came like two days ago. So I got it really quick. But anyway, today we're actually going to talk about Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein. Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is that Trisha Paytas has deleted their apology video to Ethan Klein, which I think is very interesting because I went in and I was looking at the different videos that Trisha had deleted from their channel. Let me pull this up really quickly. Up oh, there, I had it full and first and foremost. If you go in and you look at the videos that Trisha has up on the, uh, the channel, um, Trisha has on there, we filmed a new front of me this week, but it won't air. Trisha also has on there another video addressing this. Then if you go into Trisha's um, vlog channel, which is just called Trisha Paytas, and you look at the videos, um, the videos, uh, they have actually, I think, deleted a few videos off of there addressing that. But Wendy Williams Show Needs to Call Me, okay, um, also addresses the front of me's last podcast being filmed. Now, here's the thing, right? If Trisha deleted this apology, there's, a, I mean, let's just... Let's just play, uh, not, I was gonna say devil's advocate, let's be speculative, no. Let's just kind of figure out what's going on here, right? What? What do you mean you don't like Trisha Paytas? You don't like Ethan Klein either? <laughs> Shut your mouth! Anyway. <laughs> peen, I think I've heard enough of you. I've had enough peen in my life. Oh my lord, family friendly. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, if, if you look at this and you kind of like are trying to figure out what's going on, it's either like, Okay, Trisha doesn't stand behind the apology anymore, which makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Has there been arguing? Has there been fighting? Is there some reason why Trisha would delete the video and leave the other ones up talking about, this is what, this is, what is speculative to me, okay? Is that Trisha deleted the apology video, but then left up the videos talking about the last episode. I think if Trisha was going to go in, and Trisha has deleted videos before where She's done, you know, six and ten videos in a row, and then two days later, she or they delete all the videos and take them all down. Um, we've seen that from Trisha in the past. So I have to believe, to some degree, now Trisha has come out in a video and talked about changing medications and uh, working on themselves and things like that. So who knows what's going on behind the scenes? Um, but I have to believe that there is some kind maybe you know ethan asked trisha to take the video down maybe trisha felt like taking the video down was the best thing because ethan didn't respond super positively to the video who knows maybe they're working on things behind the scenes and trisha felt like trisha felt like having the video gone would probably be the best thing i don't know um it just seems very interesting to me that all of a sudden the video is gone and trisha didn't come out and say anything about it trisha is somebody that does something and then comments on it on Twitter and this, 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 and this, and constantly is saying why they do things and whatever. So the fact that they deleted the apology video, knowing that everybody was going to look at this and see that the apology video was gone. And I mean, I've seen a lot of people talking about it on Twitter. There've been several drama channel videos made about it. The fact that <clears throat> Trisha would delete the video and then not say anything about it is, I don't know, it's speculative to me, right? It makes me wonder what's really going on behind the scenes. But like I say, in any videos where I'm covering, you know, Trisha and Ethan together, I'm like, I wish that they could just solve things behind the scenes that, you know, like, let's stop poking the bear, let's stop spinning this. Y'all have happy family together, and I don't know, show that in a vlog down the road. I mean, this kind of stuff, I, I don't know. I think if you're going to come out and you're going to do an apology video to somebody specifically, and you're going to take responsibility for all of these things, and then delete the video, it's very telling to me. And you know, we've seen a lot of that lately. It's like, James Charles did the taking accountability video, and then took the taking accountability video down, right? So what does that mean? Does that mean that you don't believe that you're accountable for the things that you said in the video anymore? Does that mean that that video was crap? Does that mean that that video, you don't stand behind the things you said? Does that mean that Trisha doesn't stand behind the things that they said in this video? To the, the apology to the crew, the apology to the family, the apology to Ethan, the apology to Hila. Does that mean that Trisha doesn't stand behind those things? Who knows, you know? Like, this is where it's like, if you're gonna do this kind of stuff and you're gonna live your life out on YouTube, then I think if you're going to do a huge apology like this, you, you got to explain to people if you're going to take the video down. You know, it's like, like with Tati Westbrook. When Tati Westbrook took her video down, you know, the last video, she said something to the effect on her newest video back. I don't want that video being up there as like, you know, a point of reference as my last video. I'm not saying that I agree with that, okay? Um, but I think, honestly, and I, and I know, and this is just me, okay? 
I understand why Tati wants that video down. But I also think that as a point of reference, it would be a good reminder to say, those are kind, the kind of friends I do not want to have anymore. Those are the kind of people I do not want to associate in the beauty influencer community. So I'm going to leave that video up as a reminder. She did say in her video that there was no legal reason why she was taking the video down or any of that kind of stuff she said. You know, I just, I don't want that video up there anymore. At least she addressed it. You know, at least she said why she's taking it down. And we see this happen all the time, you know, with YouTubers that come out and do these apologies and they take, and they, and they do it like at three o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, like nobody's going to notice. What? Just come out and say, I'm taking this video down and this is the reason why I'm taking it down. I don't understand. So a lot of people are wondering what's going on behind the scenes with Trisha and Ethan. I don't know. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I wish them both the best. I know Centipede does not like them. What? You've changed your mind. Can't you just keep anything straight? What? Oh, you're inconsistent with your stories. Anyway, so uh, shut up. God, you're so loud. Anyway, chatter, chatter, chatter. Just talks all day long. Won't stop. Drives me crazy while I'm trying to film my video. Enough. Anyway, so let's get into the next story. The next story is that Ethan Klein called out James Charles in a tweet the other day. Um, Ethan Klein put up, this is actually his first tweet that he has up if you go to his Twitter right now, and I think it's from the 16th, which is yesterday. So, first of all, for a point of reference, um, James Charles put this picture up here. I'm going to put it up here for you right here. <clears throat> he put this picture up, um, yeah, two days ago, and it says, game over, and it's him in an arcade. I don't know, it like, <laughs> Dave and Buster's or something like that. I've never been to the Dave and Buster's. Have you ever been there? I can't believe I've never been to the Dave and Buster's in my life. There's him, he's standing at the Pac-Man thing. He's like this. <laughs> Did they shut down this whole place just so he could do a photo shoot there? I oh, know he's, like, bouncing on the thing. Bouncing, 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 and bouncing. And, um... So anyway, so there he is. He won himself a big uh, pink plush elephant or something. I don't know. In the giant claw. Nobody wins that giant claw thing, okay? I had this friend of mine back in the day. Oh, she'd drive us nuts, right? So like after we would go to meetings and stuff, we'd go to Denny's and eat. And they had one of those claw machines. And she would sit there and make her girlfriend wait for hours. And she'd just feed quarter after quarter after quarter in that claw machine. Because she wanted to win so bad. I'm like, girl, okay, seriously? I think this is the problem. I think the claw machine is a problem at this point. So here he is, but uh, if you look at the very first picture where he is sitting here, like I, up here, I have it up here again, I'm hoping, I don't know. <laughs> Ethan Klein retweeted that picture and he said in here, hold on a second, I'm going to have to edit this a little bit. He said, James Charles is repairing his image of being a, the P word, of um, young guys by, hang, but he didn't say that word, by hanging out in an arcade where young guys frequent with his fly down, okay? Um, I do think it's an interesting picture. I think that either James Charles didn't think this through at all, which I can't imagine that his team, his team wouldn't be like, I'm not really sure that you standing in an arcade holding a plush stuffed elephant you guys, I mean, he's 22, okay? Like, and I'm not saying that you can't go to the Dave and Buster's and have a good time, okay? I don't know. Is it showbiz pizza? I don't know what it is. What's the Chuck E. Cheese? Is he out the Chuck E. Cheese or is he out? I mean, it, okay. So anyway, I don't know. Maybe he loves the Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know, okay? So he's there at the Chuck E. Cheese or the Dave and Buster's or wherever he is. And he's playing these video games. He's holding this elephant and all this kind of stuff, Okay. I just think, like, if you had been through everything that James Charles had been through and had all these people, you know, all the allegations that you have, why would you ever think, okay, like, I'm going to take a picture uh, standing, you know, in, in this arcade. Like, does he not think? I, I mean, it's really, I don't know. It's So, it's interesting to me, but Ethan Klein called him out, and, um, uh, if you go to the picture underneath James saying, James is receiving such harsh criticism just on everything across the board. I mean, people are still like, no, this ain't it. I'm over you, blah, 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 whatever. And he just keeps on putting up videos and putting out. I think like, I think James is really under the belief that if he just keeps on pushing along like Jeffree Star and Tati and these other people, that he is going to escape the night. <laughs> He just put that on his, uh, not escape the night, the escape room, that he's going to es escape all this. He just put a new escape room on his uh, Instagram story. But I don't 
necessarily believe that's the case because let me tell you, okay? And there were comments underneath there that where people were like, I think you need help, I think you need counseling, I think you need therapy, whatever. James Charles hasn't done any of that because if he did, he would have told us in his taking accountability video, of which is now taken down, and he didn't tell us any of those things. He didn't tell us any of those things when he came back, right? Or he said in his taking accountability video that he was gonna go do those things, but he didn't come back and tell us those things. So apparently he is not doing those things. Why? Because apparently James Charles thinks that there's nothing wrong, okay? And here's the issue for everybody that goes, what's wrong? James Charles did take accountability. He confirmed several of the issues that were a problem, right? And his response to that was, I was just desperate, you know? And I need to check people's IDs. I'm not sure going to an arcade is probably the best place to go check for people's IDs. I'm just saying, okay? So anyway, I just, the whole thing to me is like, the problem is, is that James thinks that this is just going to go away, right? But he's not really doing any work on what the existing problem was to begin with. That has been a problem for a while. It wasn't just, this was like a one and happen thing, one and done kind of deal, right? And so, if that's the case, and yes, there's been a lot of allegations which are probably false. There's been a lot of probably made up allegations that have no bearing in truth whatsoever. But there were some true allegations that James Charles himself even confirmed, right? Okay, so if that's the case and James doesn't work on it, then down the road, something like that is probably going to happen again. Okay, so let me give you an example. The last James Charles video I think that I made, I was talking about the fact that and, and so many people were like this is really not that big of a deal it, it kind of is honestly okay is like so because i'm such a believer that if you hang around a barbershop long enough you're going to get your hair cut okay as far as like a, well, it's a recovery saying that we say in recovery from addiction right um so james charles did this instagram story where he came out and he said that he was looking for somebody to help him make thumbnails for his videos and that he's never let his team do that and his team this and his team that he always talks about this team of people he has which is basically just a bunch of friends that he probably pays so that they don't have to work and they can hang out and live with him is probably what it is okay it's the whitney houston is what it is whitney houston had all of her friends and family working for her and then they would never tell her no do you guys do you see the whitney houston documentary so if you've watched the whitney houston documentary it's very telling of celebrities and people that have a lot of money okay not all of them but some of them in the video Whitney Houston has like every one of her family members work for her okay and at the end of the video there's a therapist in there that like knew Whitney Houston and whatever and she said they all have a part in what happened to Whitney Houston because not one person was willing to say no to Whitney Houston. And if she did, she just hire somebody else, right? But they weren't willing to give up their half a million dollar houses. They weren't willing to give up driving Mercedes. They weren't willing to have to do, uh, go and get like jobs and when they could just work for Whitney Houston and go on tour with her and, you know, make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Took total advantage of Whitney Houston. Why would you ever tell her no? You wouldn't tell her no if it was at the expense of, you know, uh, putting money in your pocket. Well, it's the same thing with some of these people that have entourages of friends around them. Their friends are probably not working. They're probably paying their way. You know, like when James is like, let's go out of town for a weekend and none of his friends have money. He even said this in a video that he didn't want to date somebody that didn't have any money because then he had to pay for everything. Thing. Are you telling me there are no 22 year old to 25 to 30 year old guys out there, okay, that are good looking in LA, that are low profile, that are not celebrities, that have a good education, that come from a good background, that have money of their own, that don't need James Charles to pay for everything? I just do not believe that, okay? And you know, and just to reference this, I used to watch that show, The Rich Kids of Beverly Hills, and <clears throat> You know, I had like E.J. Johnson on there and his friends and all these people, right, that had a lot of money that were probably James Charles' age now. And no, they weren't self-made. They were people that were born into the family and whatever. You know, like E.J. Johnson and his sister, they, Magic Johnson was their father and whatever. They all dated. They all had friends that had money. They had 10 times more money than James Charles ever wants to have, okay? All of these people, the Dorothy Wangs and all, you know, the Morgan Stewarts and all these people, they had more money than James Charles ever could imagine having from their family. Family, right they didn't have a problem finding people to date you know you look at all these you know the the 
Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, all of their daughters who are supermodels, they don't have problems finding people to date, that they're having to pay all the way for it and stuff like that. Why is James Charles the only person that has a problem finding one person out there? Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's because the person that James Charles wants to be with is somebody that lives in his parents' basement that plays video games all day long and hangs out on TikTok, okay? Maybe it's not the person that's out there that's actually trying to do something with their life, okay? That's actually, And I'm not dogging doing that, but let's just be for real. If you're hanging out in your parents' basement playing video games all day long and just hanging out on the TikTok, okay? You're not going to college. You're not trying to work. You're not having two jobs. You're not working 80 hours a week. You're not doing all these kinds of things. So, of course, that's not who James Charles is going to meet, right? So, what does he do? He says, hey, I'm looking for a graphic designer to, or somebody that's good with graphic design to do my thumbnail logos. Contact me in my DMs. Girl, this is where it's, this is where the problem started was in your DMs. If I were James Charles, I would close down my DMs for good, okay? I would say, I have a business email. If you want me to do a sponsorship, if you want to contact me for business, contact my email. And no, it's not like... It's, much better than a DM. People can say the same things in emails as they said in DMs, but it's a little bit more professional. Let's just be for real, right? Not to mention, if James Charles has a team, why are the team not the people that are in charge of helping get this graphic designer on board? Like if James Charles has a manager or somebody that, why wouldn't they be in charge of that? Why would the way to contact to be in charge of helping with the thumbnails be through James Charles um, DMs on Instagram? That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, and I was thinking about this, right? Imagine the amount of DMs that James Charles gets, okay? Now, I am nobody on YouTube, okay? Well, I might be a little bit of a somebody. I mean, you know, but I get so many DMs on Twitter and on Instagram and all this kind of stuff that I literally, you guys, I cannot keep up with it, okay? I, I cannot keep up with it. I wish I could. I think it's very nice. It's very flattering, okay? I mean, I don't get nobody that's up in there, you know, <laughs> nobody's sneaking into my DMs, you know what I'm saying? Okay, they're in there, they're like, I love Stevie Nicks too, or, you know, somebody's showing me a new palette that they bought, or sending me a picture of their grandbaby or their dog watching my video. Very nice, very nice, you know what I mean? It's none of the ones I'm sure James Charles gets, or Jeffree Star, you know? But, um, so anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, it would be hard for me to go through the DMs and see where somebody said, like, right, because you only see, like, the beginning of the sentence, so you only get, like, five words, right? What would somebody have to say in five words of a DM to let you know that they were interested in doing the thumbnails? They would have to put, like, thumbnails in all caps with, like, exclamation marks or something like that, right, with emojis, for you to even get their attention, the amount of DMs that James Charles gets. So how does James Charles decide whose DM he opens? Or does he just go down the list and look at the profile pictures? And when he sees a profile picture that looks like maybe somebody that would be good at making thumbnails, he opens that DM. This is where it doesn't matter if James Charles keeps on pushing through. Something is going to happen again, and it's going to cause James Charles a lot of problems. And he doesn't understand it because James Charles doesn't think that there's anything wrong, okay? And this is where somebody needs to step in, like James' parents or friends or something, and say, James, you really need help with this, okay? Like, you really need to talk to somebody, or this is going to happen again. And the next time that it happens, it could effectively ruin your career for good. I mean, it, I can't believe that it hasn't had the devastating effect that when Tati came out with her initial video that he lost 3 million subscribers overnight. I think part of the problem is that people are getting so immune to these allegations. You know, if you really look at drama, which this isn't even really drama, but if you look at the evolution of it over the last couple years of what I've talked about, you know, like five years it'll be in September since I've been on here, that it really started with silly kind of stuff, you know, drama. And now everything is so like, well, this person did this, or this person did this, or let's pull up this from 10 years ago, or this person did this, or let me, and it's all of it so dark that I think the reality is the people that watch these people are just so immune to it at this point. It's like, oh, another story. Oh, another allegation. Oh, another this, that they don't really care. And I'm sitting here watching it going, I'm completely baffled why people are okay with this. I'm really baffled by this, okay? Why people don't want the people that they look up to to take accountability or that, you know, whatever. There have been people, there have been celebrities celebrities that I have looked up to that I have just been done with like right right away you know um and so I just it like it doesn't like 
by their actions. So I don't understand why people continue to support and support and support and support all of this. And it's just like, I think that part of the problem is that to stand culture, we become so immune to these kind of stories and allegations at this point that it's like, oh, just another one. Oh, just another one, right? And it's sad because there are real people out there that are being affected by this. And I don't know, it just, anyway, anyway. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.